Good afternoon. It is time for Life on the Light Side. Greetings to you from Tishy and me. Um, I got to tell you, is one thing this cat looks forward to. Just minutes ago, she was snoozing all by herself in her kitty cave. And she knew it was time. There's even a snack in her dish, but she's not eating it because she knew it's time to do the video. So say hello to all your faithful viewers. Meow. Yes, it's the girl. Well, welcome to Life on the Light Side. If this is your first time, just pull up a chair, sit down, enjoy, make yourself a little tea, coffee, juice, wine, whatever floats your boat, because it's time to sit down and lighten up. All righty. Oh, got crazy hair today. So um, anyway, it's a it's a good day here. Tishy is uh, hanging in there. She's um, eating a little bit. I went to the to the uh, bother of making her a scrambled egg this morning because somebody said cats will eat scrambled eggs and and she thought it was pretty awful. She never was a kitty for uh, people food. But anyway, so I got a report from the vet and uh, she has a potential uh, urinary tract infection along with her kidney stuff going on. So, so. Looks like I'm going to have to be learning how to give her fluids. So keep that in your prayers that I'll have the courage, et cetera. And I hate to say it, but I cannot see my comments anymore. So I don't know if I did something. Let me just click this little button. I keep trying to think of what I might be doing that took away my comments. That doesn't look like it. So I will look at comments later. So if you want to get back to me and if you are new and you want to see all our Life on the Light Side videos, I invite you to go to YouTube and search Life on the Light Side. That's L-I-T-E side. Uh, Alicia Leslie and you should see all of our videos. And I was able to sneak away from work today. I'm still trying to figure out a, a time change that might make it better as much as I hate to change times because we kind of all settled into this four o'clock thing, you know, but things change and out here it's camping season. And this afternoon, um, we played Mahjong. And I think I've told you before that uh, it's a great game from China. And um, you play it with little square tiles and you have a card that has sets that you try to make with your tiles. And it's very complex, but very fun. And it keeps the brain going. So um, we did that today and we were just had a good time. But let me tell you, phone was ringing, hopping up and down. My poor sister was bringing uh, people to their sites. And if you can't tell from my sweatshirt, here, look at the sweatshirt. It's winter again. It is a mighty cold out there. So I've got a shirt on under my sweatshirt and I've got a sweatshirt that I wear back and forth to the office to try to keep warm. And I'm glad I'm not camping today. Okay, not in a tent anyway. That. We don't have any tenters today, but we got some coming in tomorrow. So we hope it's going to lighten up a little bit, you know, temperature wise for them. Okay, so let's get to the National Day calendar. And today is Earth Day. If there was one thing I would hope that people would really understand is our oneness. We're one with the planet. We're one with each other. Even that one that tap dances on your last nerve, part of our lessons to be learned here on planet Earth are to get along. You don't have to like someone 
to love them unconditionally, okay? Um, you just have to take deep breaths and remember to hold your peace and speak your truth with love. Well, isn't it the same thing with our Mother Earth? You know, we are either a, a parasite or a symbiote. Now, the difference between a parasite and a symbiote is that a parasite lives off of and eventually kills its host. So it just like sucks the life right out of it. like a Um, so it sucks the life and, uh, but they're not an actual parasite, I don't think. But that's, that's the idea. You know, you get it where it just takes the life out of it. And a symbiote is something that lives in harmony with its host. Its host is what it lives on. So we live on the planet. So we are either a parasite taking its good and draining it of its resources or we are a symbiote that supports it and is in harmony with its needs. Yes, Mother Earth provides so much for us, and yet Mother Earth has needs, the needs of cleanliness and no toxicity. And that's what happens is we, when we put ourselves first, you know, before the planet, now I know, I know, I know, I know. I've heard this for years. It's the big companies that do all the trashing. Well, meanwhile, if we're trashing at all, we're part of the problem, not a part of the solution. So on this wonderful Earth Day, I would encourage you to enjoy nature. I would invite you, first of all, right now, right now, to pray. To pray for the beautiful planet we live on to pray that we will find ways to stop abusing it and start nurturing and loving it and caring for it and conserving and rightly using all the gifts that we receive from our Mother Earth. <laughs> so uh, that is one thing. Okay, it is also National Jelly Bean Day. Now, I haven't had a jelly bean in quite a long time. Um, I kind of switched over at some point from, uh, from you know, like the sweet hardish candies, straight up sugar candies over to chocolate and then dark chocolate. And then the darker the chocolate, the better. So, uh, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't eat a jelly bean, especially, uh, what is it? Mrs. Bot's Beans, Bot's Beans, Professor Bot Beans, whatever. And not the ones, they've got ones that are flavored like earwax and other disgusting vomit. Um, but the uh, typical blueberry, blackberry, you know. But I don't know if anybody else does this. And if you do this, put it in the comments so I know I'm not alone. Even at my current age, on the very rare occasion when I have a jelly bean, I always put it in my mouth and crack away the coating, the hard sugary coating, and then I enjoy the gummy center. It's just what I do, you know. Everybody's got their weird stuff. That's my jelly bean weirdness. And uh, ooh, there was a president who loved jelly beans. Do you remember who that was? Uh, I count to 10 and tell you, try to drag it out of your memory. It's healthy for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. If you had it, I hope you put it in the comments, which I can't see. But it was Ronald Reagan, as far as I recall. Ronald Reagan loved jelly beans and had jars of them in the Oval Office. And uh, so that's something I remember from back in the day. Now, I gave, you the, I gave you the heads up yesterday 
that today is bring your sons and daughters to work day. And I'd love to know from you, let me know in the comments, which I can't see now, if you took a son or daughter to work and how it went. Now, if you forgot, it's only Thursday, you got Friday, so bring your son or daughter to work tomorrow. It's always nice that they get to see you on a different level, on a different scale. Now, when uh, Sammy was living with me, when she was still on the planet and um, I was, t I was uh, raising her, we would be, uh, she always went to work with me, not going to work with me would have been, you know, if she was out of school, she would go with me to the church while I worked. And I will always remember a very precious day. I was in my office and I heard her talking and I said, what is she talking about? And I went into the sanctuary and there she was preaching up a storm. She was about eight or nine. The one thing I regret is that I kind of slipped away and she hadn't seen me. So I slipped away and let her just carry on. But I wish I'd have listened to what she was preaching about. That would have been a pretty, a pretty good thing. You know? So anyway, it's really, really good for your sons and daughters to get to know the many facets of who you are. You are not just mom. You are not just dad. Um, you are a person that has... Uh, a, a job that is meaningful and, and works hard and uh, does that. To, what, the, what are they doing all that time? They're not with you, you know, that you get to have them know that. Of course, now that a lot of people are working at home, well, that's no big deal. <laughs> I see my parent at work every day, you know, but we're getting back. We're getting back. I'm hearing more and more people talking about their jobs or calling them back into the office. Uh, they say some people will never go back to the office at the companies and they have come to terms that not too bad working from home. But I still think there is not only the, the camaraderie, but the energy and the need, which I've talked about before, for not only high tech, we're visiting high tech, but there's something special about high touch. And that's what I enjoyed this afternoon when we were playing Mahjong. I will say I didn't win a game, but I was mighty close. On that last game, I was mighty close. All righty. Um, it is another very special day, which I thought about, and I only wish that my parents had celebrated that day. It is... Teach your children to save day. Yeah. I asked my sister, uh, you know, when I said, oh, it's National to Teach Your Children to Save Day. <clears throat> Do you remember mom and dad ever teaching us about saving? And she said, no, I remember going to the bank and, you know, getting a savings account and that felt pretty good. And, um, but she said, I don't remember them teaching. I remember my dad uh, telling me never to get a credit card. That's what I remember about my dad teaching me about money. Well, along with the fact that if we asked for anything, if we asked for the money, we usually got it. But we got it with the lecture about, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. Well, yes, I can. That's self-evident. <laughs> but... um. We didn't really get the really the, about the uh, the depths of teaching children to save. Now, again, back with my own kids, I tried, you know, giving them an allowance thing. But I wasn't very good at it. I didn't uh, <laughs> didn't give them a very appetizing allowance, to be perfectly honest. But then again, they didn't do a lot for it either. So. Let's do it all over again. Boy, I'll tell you. So, um, but when I had Sammy and Marky with me, I was saying, okay, this is my do-over and I'm going to teach them to save. 
the best example that I did of that, which I probably could have done better, but the best example that I did was when uh, we used to live right near Bush Gardens, maybe a 35, 40 minute drive. And we had season passes. If you live that close to something, you know, you got to have a season pass. And that would mean that we could go up in the evening and maybe pay $5 for parking. Maybe not. It was 30 years ago, 20 years, 20 some odd years ago. But um, we would go up to Bush Gardens, which is so beautiful at night. I have to tell you, Bush Gardens is in Williamsburg is just such a beautiful place. You want to talk about lightening up. You, you know, you go there in the evening and it gets dark and they've got fairy lights on all the trees and there's music in the background and you walk around and the, the crowd is thinned out and it's just so beautiful. Well, it happened that Sammy saw these umbrellas and there was a pink umbrella with a ballerina on it. And she said, oh, Nana, can I have this? And I said, well, not today, but I'll tell you what. It costs, I think it was like $8.95. If you save the money, you know, I will, you know, you can do extra chores and make some money. If you get birthday money, anything you do, um, save your money and I'll drive you up here and we can get it. And she saved her money. And I remember that day. I've got a picture. I'll look for the picture and try to post it for you. Um, the picture of uh, her standing there with the ballerina umbrella. And they wrote her name on it, you know, like with that liquid paint, uh, you know, liquid pen, whatever. And they wrote her name. And that was a huge day. She saved her money. She bought it and felt so good about it. It was truly, truly a special day. So have you taught your kids to save? Did you? How did you? Did you have any good experiences, um, you know, with what they've saved? And, you know, for myself, um, I, I caught on to the prosperity thing later in life. I And it really, really goes to show you change your consciousness. You change the way you think and things in your life change. Um, so I I got it later in life that's about the importance of saving. And I started to put some money in an account. I had this one account. And that was my, we don't, in Unity, we don't like to call it an emergency fund because if you put it for an emergency fund, probably attract an emergency. So we call it an opportunity fund. So I have an opportunity fund. And back when uh, I had made the decision for my, uh, my healing my heart, uh, my little aching heart after, you know, um, I lost Sammy, um, I had been guided by spirit to drive Route 66. And I had no qualms at all about taking that opportunity fund and spending it. And I didn't, it was, you know, it, it was separate from my absolute needs and like that. So I didn't have to charge a thing. The only thing I used my charge card for was to be able to track my expenses. So I'd use the charge card and then I would pay the bill and uh, I pay it out of my opportunity fund. And when I went, I had cash out of my opportunity fund. So teach your kids to save. Maybe you got to teach yourself first. <laughs> Times they're, they're not, you know, they're not, they're not all that easy, but they're not hard enough that you can't put something away. If you practice, now my daughter practices, it's called rounding up. She has a card where she can round up every time she uses the card. She spends money, gets gas, coffee, whatever she gets. She It rounds up to the next dollar amount. And she has a good amount in her savings account. These are the little things we don't think about. But it makes you feel so prosperous to have anything in a savings account. I may not be rolling in it, but I'm not staying awake at night wondering if I'm going to make it through the day, you know. 
So, um, and the other part of that is to share with others. Don't forget, that's a part of the, of the whole cycle of prosperity. Save some. Here's the affirmation. I've given it before. I'll give it again. I'm going to say it a couple times if you want to write it down. I am rich, rich, rich. I have plenty, plenty, plenty. Plenty to spend, plenty to spare, plenty to save, plenty to share. I am rich, rich, rich. I have plenty, plenty, plenty. I'm going to do it one more time in case you didn't get a chance to get it all. It's a perfect prosperity affirmation. I am rich, rich, rich. I have plenty, plenty, plenty. Plenty to spend. Plenty to spare, plenty to save, plenty to share. Whatever you put, whatever order you put those in, it's, it's always fun. Doesn't matter what order. Plenty to spend, plenty to spare, plenty to save, plenty to share. Those are those four things that are important. You want to spend some, save some, share some, and you'll always have some to spare. Okay? I think that's a good thing. Well. And it is National Girl Scout Leader Day. I never made it to Girl Scouts. I made it to Brownies. And then, I don't know, my mom's schedule, whatever, I couldn't, I couldn't get to the meetings. Who knows? Maybe they didn't have a teacher. I mean, I was back, what, six, seven years at, at that time. So um, I, let's give our, you know, give a round of applause for our Girl Scout leaders because they help girls learn all kinds of life skills and um, and they're willing to share so freely of their time and their talent and their energy and their life. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to give you a peek at tomorrow. I'm going to give you one thing because you only need one thing tomorrow. Tomorrow is picnic day. Now, I don't know how warm it's going to be here, but I sure hope it's warmer. And if it's warmer, I just may just make myself a picnic and go outside and eat it at my little picnic table in my yard. No, I know it may not be like going somewhere and going on a picnic, but isn't it that nice that I can go for a picnic, you know, right where I am, take a break from work. We'll talk more about picnics tomorrow. But today is, today is story time. So I hope you are settled in. Let's just take a minute, just relax. Get ready to enjoy a story. Now this one is a little, a little harder for me to read because I try to do an accent, which I may not do the best so you don't have to alert me to the fact that i don't do the accent well i'm already aware of that i want you to just enjoy the story so you can get to the pleasure that it was written with the intention of giving to you this story is called there once was a man the members of the wednesday night bible study group had begun to arrive Wendy and Josh wondered how many of them would brave the bone-chilling midwinter winds to attend. Sounds like it was written for today. Especially since the size of the group had been dwindling for the past few months. While this was disappointing, it seemed nothing could be done about the apparent cause. Without an unpleasant confrontation, that is. Sarai, one of the pillars of the church, had started attending the study group about three months ago. Coinciding with the slow exodus of group members, her long-winded, holier-than-thou pontificating, spewed verbal slime that landed in the mind of each person, sickening them with perceived guilt 
and questions about their own spiritual worth. While Josh answered the door, hung the coats in the closet, and invited everyone to get comfortable, Wendy brewed the coffee and set the tea kettle on the stove and put the finishing touches on a plate of homemade biscotti. She wanted everything to be perfect tonight, as the minister had promised to attend. The plan was that if the minister was there, perhaps Sarai would be on her best behavior. Maybe, just maybe, tonight would be a good night. When the refreshments were all set out, the guests were invited to come fill their cups and have a bite to eat. As they were doing that, chattering away, ooing and eyeing over the beautiful treats, the doorbell rang. It was Reverend Maurice. A former resident of the Jamaican islands, his broad and very brown face literally lit up the room. The tall, vibrant, larger than life man walked in, his booming voice greeting everyone with a smile in each word. Josh always said, if Reverend Maurice does not make you smile, check your pulse. You may be dead. Maybe tonight would be different. Settling in and getting ready for the study group class to commence, Wendy and Josh caught each other's eye with no words spoken. If you caught the silent exchange, you would have clearly heard, here we go, God help us. It happened that Sarai had selected the scripture passage to be discussed. Reverend Marie said an opening prayer, and then Sarai moved forward in her chair, her chest lifting up forward as her head tilted slightly to the side, and a smile, or might we say a cocky smirk, crossed her lips. Tonight, she started with her God Almighty tone, we will be discussing the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 10 to 12. Here Jesus is asked by his disciples, why do you speak to them in parables? And Jesus tells them, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Now that she was warmed up, Sarai stood to continue. She was on a roll. Again, Wendy and Josh exchanged glances of dismay. It appeared that tonight Sarai had intended to bring enlightenment to the minister as well. Their glances flashed to Reverend Maurice, who was just smiling and nodding. But he didn't know better because this was the first time he'd attended a meeting. Now, the way I believe this should be interpreted, she said, puffing up with pride, is that there are those of us who are more knowledgeable and gifted in understanding the scriptures, and Jesus does not need to mamby-pamby us with little stories, so we must teach the others with stories they can understand. I mean, isn't that why you've all gathered here to try to understand as a lifelong student of the Bible, I feel I am here to help you do that. Every eye in the room flashed over to the face of Reverend Maurice. Strangely, he was sitting there with that same serene, beaming smile. The slime must have missed him, they thought. 
Sarai, the only one in the room who had apparently not noticed the effect of her words, continued. Isn't that right, Reverend Maurice? The room was completely silent. Not even breathing could be heard, as everyone anticipated the minister's response. Well, Sarai, the way I see it, he said in his Jamaican lilt, is that Jesus wanted to touch the heart of every man and woman, all of God's kids. As he told the men with stories, he who is without sin throw the first stone. In his parables, Jesus said, There was a man. And not a man, you got a problem. There once was a man. Because most of us are terrified by the thought we might be guilty of some terrible sin that makes us unworthy of God's love. He was not pointing the finger at anyone so that each person could hear the story and see how it might relate to them in their life. Uh, Jesus also said, None is so blind as he who will not see. When we think we have all the answers is when we need most to learn. Sarai sunk slowly into her chair, leaning back, apparently trying to disappear into the pattern of the upholstery. Reverend Maurice continued, Guilty? We are all guilty of something. Not because we are bad or wrong, but because we are each a work of God in progress. And innocent? We're all innocent because once we know better, then we will do better. That is our divine destiny. The atmosphere in the room was shifting. Weighing the words of the minister in their hearts, and seeing the deflated ego of Sarai slumped in the chair, the group was moved to compassion. Yet nobody knew how to express it. Suddenly, Josh stood up. Hey, that reminds me of the rock opera Godspell. You know, that was the first time I really got it about what the parables meant. I got it that we're all in this together, working out our stuff. I got a great idea. Who wants to watch the movie? And everyone was thrilled at the idea. Wendy rushed off to the kitchen to make some popcorn while everyone shifted their seats to get a good view of the TV. Reverend Maurice went over to Sarai, putting his big arm around her and said, Sarai, thanks for the sharing tonight. Looks like we've all grown up a bit. Shall I get you some popcorn for the movie? Sarai smiled sheepishly and said, Oh no, I'm full of crow. Everyone laughed as the laughter filled the room. Any discomfort or awkwardness vanished. And that very night, the Bible study group turned a corner in the direction of learning and loving, and Sarai was always welcome. Well, I hope you enjoyed our Life on the Light Side today and story time. Hope to see you back tomorrow. I'm not going to give you a promise on the time yet, okay, because tomorrow's Friday, and people are going to be checking in, more people than today. So um, we'll see what happens. God's in charge, as you know. And I can tell you tomorrow is what? Treasure chest day. So have a good evening and God bless you good. Bye-bye.